Yes, guys, you're back again with me, Mark Adio, and today you're watching the I Know Podcast. As you know, like I said before, when we get the guests on, we bring the best of the best. The best of the best. Say it with me. The best of the best. And today, we've got the man himself, Harvey Gilmore! Man like, how are you, Harvey? How are you? Yeah, good, man, good. How, how, how's your day been? Uh, yeah, day off today. Um, we've got game Saturday, game got called off yesterday. So, um, you know, just getting ready for Saturday. Right. Guys, As you, if you don't know, Harvey is a professional footballer. He plays for Halifax Town in the National League. But he's been there and he's done it. Do you know what I mean? 24 years old, by the way, and he's done, he's done, he's done something in the game. So... Let's talk about how it all started for you, Harvey. Oof. Sheffield uh, United. In fact, let's take it before Sheffield United. Let's take it to yeah. grassroots. <laughs> right, okay. So, I would say coming from Wood Seats, Greenall's close. That that's the, that was the probably the first I remember you know, playing football, especially with my mom taking me. Um, taking me Friday nights up to the transport. Um, and then, I think there was a manager called Andy Lauks. He was the one who told my mom, you know, get him into it. He's, you know, he's quite, he's all right. So how young he is. So then, starts playing for Greenhill. Um, you know, we had some good players in that team as well. I think probably the biggest one now is George Hurst. Hurst is in my team as well. Oh wow! Yeah. So <laughs> okay. his, his journey is, you know, miles, yeah, miles yeah, yeah. ahead. But you know, it was one of them ones where I was, I was quite enjoying myself, um, and I think it just become it just come natural to me. You know, I, was, I enjoyed football. I think you know what. At one point, my mom was taking me to maybe four or five sessions a week. Yeah. And then through that, that's when I got uh, the call from Chef U. Um, that's when, you know, they have them development squads and I sat there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, I started doing that at the start. I think I was only about six. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it was that young. And then I think seven is when you can actually sign. So that's when I signed for them. How, how did you feel when you when you signed at that age? Uh, it's, it's hard, really, because you just... You, you don't really pay attention to what's actually going on. You just think, oh, I'm just signing for another club really here. But, yeah. you know, in the scheme of things, you are you are signing for an academy. And I think going from grassroots to then academy, it's a, it's it's massive really. Yeah, because yeah. then you're getting coached with very good coaches and you're coming up against, you know, some great, great players. Yeah. So how how long were you at Sheffield United for? Um, Probably till I was about from seven till I was about 19. Wow. Yeah, it's a long time. So you your your whole teenage life pretty much was spent there. How was how was it obviously growing up in the academy and obviously meeting other lads from different parts of Sheffield? It was it was, it was especially getting older when you were about sixteen, when you know you went into the scholar days. I think scholar days probably my best times, but you know, I think in my childhood that's all I all I remembered is, you know, Sheffield United Academy. I think you know, in school we was training Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then game Saturday. Yeah. But it 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 you know it didn't bother me. You know, there's there's been times where you, you don't go to the parties or you don't go you know to your friend's house. But to me, it's bec it's become a norm now. Yeah. Um, and I I've enjoyed every minute at Sheffield. And yeah. I loved it. Yeah. So when you when you got to obviously you mentioned getting to the scholar days. Obviously, scholarships are a big thing. So if you don't know at home what a scholarship is, you basically sign like a two-year usually scholarship with a with a professional club or sometimes it's semi-pro clubs now that are getting the, starting to have the whole scholarship program. And you basically spend your, from 16 to about 18, yeah. you know, as a full-time footballer for the first time. Were you nervous? Yeah, very nervous, I think. When you send you there full time, aren't you there around the building? You see the first team, you see the first team staff, the first team gaffer, and it does put it does put a bit of pressure on you. But because you've got because you've got so close as a group, especially the scholars, yeah, it's very it just become like it would just become another school, really. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. when you know we were there from nine till probably half four, you know, collecting bottles at <laughs> four o'clock, cleaning balls. But it honestly, honestly, it was by far my best two years. I've yeah. Had. So obviously you you went into the scholarship program at Sheffield United. Who was the biggest part of your journey when you were there? Um, I'd probably say I'd probably say our trainer, uh, Travis Binion. Um he's at Man U now. Um he's okay. a trainer. But he was he was very um I was like he was very strict with us, but he knew how good we could become. 
Yeah. And especially with most of the lads being from Sheffield, uh, it, it you could see how much, how well we played together, you know, with the bonding and stuff like that. And he was always pushing us. Um, and I think in my, in my two years, well, we got to four finals in two years and won, obviously, the league in one of them. Wow. So it, you know, a lot of it was down to him. Wow. Guys, so at this, before we started the podcast, I asked Harvey to write three words that he'd used to best describe his career so far. So Harvey, you've wrote the three words. If I could just have the piece of paper. Cheers, mate. Thank you. And what we'll do, we'll come onto it right at the end. So I'll pass that to you. And yeah, we'll keep going. But bro, it sounds great. It sounds amazing. So you've obviously done your scholarship. When was the pro contract there for the taking? When do you think it, it became available to you? Um, normally, it's at, it's, at, it's at the end of the scholar. But uh, I think after the first year, I was paying quite a lot of the 23s games, you know, with with the older lads. And Trav took that as well. So. I think it was at the end of my first year scholar. They did, you know, say, "Look, we want to offer you a one-year pro." And obviously, at that time, you think, "Wow!" Well, like in that when you when you're that young, you think, "Yeah, I've made it in football." But obviously, it's it's just the beginning. But you know, I was I was happy at that at that point. Yeah. How 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 did you did you feel? How was your family? How was everyone's feelings about the offer? Um. Yeah. Uh. You know, as a first, especially the seventeen year old getting a pro contract, it's. It's quite surreal. Uh, you know, you've been playing it for, you know, 10, 12 years of your life. And it was just uh, it was just another stepping stone to how I wanted to be, really. Yeah. And it just, did it all just, did life change after that? Or was it kind of the same? You just went in as usual? Yeah, it was, it was kind of the same, really. It was just, you know, yeah, you got another contract, so you're here for another year. You know, oh, you do wow. the same things. Yeah, yeah. But I think when you get recognised, especially in the scholar days, you know, maybe go up to the first team to train, which yeah, yeah. at that point was huge for me. Yeah. You know, especially being a Sheffield fan. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Like playing with, you know, the likes of Fleck, Coots, Duffs, Sharpie, <laughs> players like, do you know when you're that young? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's quite surreal, but then after time, it it fades away and, you know, you you realise you're not there just for to take part, you're there, you know, to try and get into the team, obviously. Yeah. And how how is it for you, obviously, this is a question that I always ask, especially professional footballers that at the start of the journey, how was it for you to um, adapt to the to the pace of the game and the strength? Because I remember when, obviously I wasn't a pro, but when I went into my scholar days, I, I remember coming up against someone called Marco Basic and he absolutely bodied me off the pitch. That was my first, like my first involvement in, yeah. in you know, a scholar. And so how was it for you, obviously going up to the pro level now, the strength, the speed, what was that like for you? It was, well, obviously, when you're in Scholar, everyone's quite quite your size. There's not a lot of people that's, you know, massive and stuff like that. But I think when you go into the 23s, you come against, you know, lads who have, from the first team, who haven't been getting minutes, so they've obviously come down just to play. But it it it, te- it took me quite a while to adapt, especially when I went into, you know, playing first team football. It took me a while then. I didn't realise how how much of a gap it would have been compared to, you know, under 18 to 23s. But I thought, I thought I weren't too bad at it. You know, it did, it took me a while, but not, not that long. Well, so obviously when you started to settle in, you've obviously gone to the next club now, mm. going out on loan. Yeah. How does that feel to go out on loan and which club did you go to on loan? Uh, well, it, it, I weren't even really meant to go out on loan. I think at the end of my first year pro, um, there's a coach at Sheffield called Chris Howarth, and he was good friends with the uh, Tramia chair, Tramia uh, manager, yeah. uh, Mickey Mellon. And he just said, look, just go and there were me and another kid. They were just like, uh, come and train with these for a couple of days and just see how it's what it's like, you know, just train with the first team. Uh, so we went down there and I think, the strength conditioning coach took us down peasy. He drove all the way to Tramia for us two hours. Wow. Four hours, some journey. Um, tra- trained a couple of days and then come back. And then in my second year, I won't I weren't really playing and I did want to go out on loan, but you know, I couldn't get anywhere. There was it's hard, especially when you're young and you're trying to go into men's football, you they could send you know all the way down to you know bottom, you know, the bottom league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard, but Chris Howarth then pulled me aside and just said, like, look. Mickey wants to see you, wants to see what you like. And so I went over again, trained for another two days. And he was like, yeah, we want to sign you. Wow. Six months. Wow. So and at that point, I thought, 
wow, well, right, you know, it's just another stepping stone. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you feel when obviously that happened and obviously now I'm guessing you had to move away? Yeah, yeah, I had to move away. So how did um, that feel? It, it, did it? Yeah. It made me a bit grown up very quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, because I didn't have a car because all the boys drove at Chef U. So yeah. I was just getting lifts off them lot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I realised, oh, like I need, I need to get, I need to get a car now. Yeah. So boxed off my um, driving, driving things in like twenty lessons first, first. Not thing. bad, not bad. Yeah, <laughs> quick, quick time. And then I remember I had to drive down, drive to Liverpool. Um, I think it was this at the end of June. Yeah. And then obviously I was living in the hotel for the uh, for the past like. For the first four weeks, I was living um, in a hotel, and then yeah. one of the lads uh, from Champion called Manny Monfe. He said, "Look, I've got a house if you want to if you want a room with me." Wow! But yeah, it, it was it was good. So how was it settling in? Obviously, you just said that one of the lads actually helped you settle in. How was was the whole team very welcoming to you? Yeah, the, I think Chammy, I think the lads were excellent. I think it had a great mixture of this. Obviously, the senior lads and the young lads. You know, I think there was me, Johnny Smith, but then the old lads like Scotty Davis, Steve McNulty, and players like that who. You know, though it was it was a really good group. Yeah. How was the manager with you? Obviously, you now obviously met the manager who's obviously friends with the manager at Chef U or the, the one of the coaches at Chef U. So how was he towards you? I'm I'm guessing he really wanted you to develop, didn't he? Yeah, he was excellent with me to be fair. Um, you know, he was coming to me every day asking me, you know, if I need anything and he he quite looked he looked after me well. Uh, I think all the players did really. Yeah, you know, I feel like I've they was open, open arms with me. Yeah. Um, and it was very easy to live live over there. Yeah. So that was obviously your kind of your first involvement in men's football, like first proper involvement. So how was it? Because I'm guessing they were in the National League at the time. No, League Two. League Two. Oh, yeah, they were in yeah. League Two. Yeah. So how was it actually like in that at that level then? When I first went, a bit scary. Really? I, obviously, I, I think I was on the bench first game of the season against... Um, I don't know if I played Steven or someone like that. And, I, you know, I was just sat looking and I think I was thinking, oh, it's a bit, bit quick for me, this. Do you know what I mean? You, yeah, don't, yeah. you don't really realise until you're sat next to it and thinking, yeah, this is real football. This is yeah. this is more than just, you know, under 18s and 23s. It's it's the fans, it's the money, it's, it's three points. So can you, what's the difference? What's the main difference that you, the main differences that you realised from going from 23s to first team? Probably there's, the importance of winning. I feel like in 23s, it's quite, it's quite, you know, building you to the next step and the next step. I think when you're, when you're in the first team, it's just three points, that's it. Yeah. You know, because that, that's what you get judged on really at the end of the day. You know, you can play well and but if you come out with no points and the fans are going to get angry, the chairman, you know, the club is not going to look good. Yeah. Just stuff like that. So you went on, you went to Trammy on a six month long. How, so how, how would you say that went for you that six months? Um, was it a success? Was it was it one of those things where it was it was all right, or was it like you know you thought you could have done so much better? To be fair, at the start I weren't really playing, but obviously I was just happy at nineteen that I was I was there. Do you know what I mean? Playing with yeah. the first team. Um, now I was training well. I enjoyed training every day, and I to me it was always just a privilege to be there. Um, I didn't expect you know to play twenty thirty games in that season, but. I think I got um, a lucky break with two of the lads getting injured. Um, yeah. And then he just chucked me in against um, Morecambe. And, you know, I just, I got lucky. I took I took the chance and got lucky. And then it, I stayed in there a few a few more games. But, you know, I, I, can't, I can't say nothing but good, goodness about that. Yeah, great. Sounds amazing, bro. So, obviously, the long comes to an end, the end of six months, and you go back to Sheffield United. Yeah. What was the what was the feeling like when you go when you came back? You know how were you feeling? You know what was your mindset like? Um, quite optimistic to be fair, um, because I know there were a few of us out on loan, and I was I was playing I was playing well for Tramie, and I thought maybe if I just got another year. But then I can remember um, coming back and playing against playing for the twenty threes actually um, the Sheffield twenty threes and. I had a horrific game. I think I, I me and the lads still joke about it now, but I think it's one of the worst games I've ever played. And what, what what makes it horrific for you? Just just everything. I thought you know, it the difference between twenty threes and first team. I I I didn't I didn't go back to how I played at twenty threes. I was taking too long on the ball, you know, misplacing passes, simple passes. And I remember walking off the pitch and thinking, 
yeah, this is my, this is my time's up. And I remember, I remember the whole first team staff were watching and I just thought to myself, yeah, like I've done myself no favours there. Oh, but why? Now I'm trying to picture this, right? Because you've obviously come from playing first team football though. Yeah. Gone back to 23s. I'd think it would be easier. Yeah, so did I. Was it, what, so was it like, how, tell me, tell me. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it was a mental thing, like, or I don't know if I were too, if I were, being too arrogant that day, but it to me it would just nothing I would do, anything I would do and just weren't working. And I remember getting so frustrated with myself and I think I think I think the manager took me off at some point. And I just I just sat on the bench and I thought, like I've done myself no favours there. And obviously, especially when Chef you don't get to see me a lot and they've seen me in this game and mm. my standard there, they must think, oh like he's he's not good enough to get another year. So Obviously, from that, what did you do to in order to actually try and get back in the good books, maybe? Um, to be fair, I just, um, tra- we had a game on the Saturday, Tramia, so I just went straight back, uh, straight after that game, drove back to Tramia. Um, and then after that game, um, I got a call saying like, you know, really, really enjoyed you in your time at Sheffield, but um, I don't think we're going to offer, no, uh, offer you another deal at the end of the year. But this were six months before. Oh, yeah, yeah. So obviously they've already made their mind up and I thought, like, yeah, I understand. Yeah. So then literally the day after, um, the Tramia gaffer rang me and just said, look, I've heard what's happened. You know, we we, we love you here. Um, so we would like to offer you a you know, contract, full yeah. contract, 18 month contract. Yeah. So at that point, I just thought, yeah, like I've, I love it here. I know I'm, I'm not blessed with opportunities and stuff like that. And I thought, like, why not? Why not would I sign? Wow. Wow. Well, just... Wow, I, I, it's, it just like obviously struck me that you know going back from uh, obviously playing first team football and you like I just can't even imagine how difficult it was yeah. at that time for, like mentally as well because so you know when they said to you and thankfully Trammy obviously offered you that that you know that future deal yeah what what was your mindset you know was it more you know when Sheffield United said you know we're not going to offer you you know, a contract in six months time, was it more like, okay, that's fine? Or was it more like, you know, a bit disappointed, a bit like, this is a bit unfair, do you know? Um, no, I wouldn't say it's unfair, you know, it's a brutal business football. I think everyone knows that. As soon as you're not wanted, you know, you're out the door. But I just felt a bit, obviously a bit sad. You know, I've been there for all my life and that's all I know. And I was, I was probably, I'd say, I was a bit too too comfortable there. You know, I knew everyone there. It's only 10, 15 minutes from my house. So it was it was probably a blessing in disguise, really. Yeah. Um, they released me. You know, I remember grow up quite a lot, obviously living away from home and going back to Tramia. Um, but then my mindset really was, right, I'm, I've come down, because they was in, I don't know if they was in League One or Championship, Sheffield at the time. They might have been in, they might, they might have been going up in League One. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I thought, right, I'm in League Two. I'm not on a loan, I'm full contract, so I just need to work as hard as I can. Yeah, yeah. You know, to try and get back back where I want to be, which is obviously League One. Yeah. So what what was the mindset then? So obviously you now, like you said, you in that mindset to really push on in the season with Tramia. So what was that going like? What was the the rest of the team, the coaches like with you going forward? Were they like fully like, look, you're now here, forget what's happened before, or was it still a bit was Sheffield United still kind of there at the start. Um, no, not really. You know, I think as soon as as soon as you set, as soon as we cut ties with them, I think I was you know I was all Tramia, yeah. and I think um, the Tramia's gaff were as well. You know, he took me as in as one of his own. Yeah. Um, and you know, I worked hard every day, staying staying after after training, doing gym and stuff like that, and it really helped me because it just, especially the way from home, there was less. You know things around me. I needed to focus on it. It yeah. was literally just football, so that was, yeah. it. It was easy for me to focus on it. Yeah. So obviously, at that in that year, you know, League Two. Now, is it now week in week out? Are you playing week in, or is it more like you know you more play, in and out, in and yeah. out, in and out? And that that was that the season you played against uh, Man United. No, that was when we played Tottenham. Tottenham. Played Man United okay. year after. So how was that? Obviously, playing against Tottenham. Surreal. Surreal. Uh, you know. Uh, cost the game before I went. I went playing. I was on the bench for. Um, I was on the bench for Tranmere, but I played in the FA Cup second round. And when we got the draw for Tottenham, I think the whole squad was like, "I've got to play." Yeah. Everyone in the team, you know, it, it's it's you're silly saying you don't, but 
you know, we come in Friday and I was on the board starting. It was wow. it was surreal. And then Saturday come and we thought they were going to play like a just you know the twenty threes team. You know, mm. they were they were flying in the league at that point. And we've we've come to the dressing room and you know there's Lucas Mora, Deli Ali, uh, Oliver Skip, Fernando Loriente. You know, players that you you've watched, uh, I've watched him, and you have as well, watching yeah, yeah. the Prem for years. <laughs> I just thought, right, I'm just going to go out there. I'm not going to worry about anything because I'm just going to enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, come onto the pitch. They had a three in midfield of Lucas, Delhi, and someone else. And you you were playing in midfield. Oh yeah, and you mean Sonia, and I was playing centre midfield uh, against <laughs> Delhi. And the, I, I heard I heard you had him in your back pocket. Oh. My <laughs> God. I think, well, we was one nil down in first half and then I think end the game, I think we were about seven or eight nil. Oh, wow. Yeah, but just just looking how they play compared to obviously where you want to be is, is where they are. Um, you know, I've looked, I looked at Deli Ali and he was streamlined, quick, yeah. six foot two. He was, he was on it. Like, you don't realise how far you are away from it until you actually get on the pitch and play against them. Yeah, so the the, the pace, everything's complete. Everything. You mean on the quick feet, looks more how sharp he was and every everything. Wow. But, you know, it's some of that I, I did enjoy. So obviously the next season you then played Manchester United. Were you more prepared for that? Yeah. I think, I think, I think the whole, I think the whole team was, it was more prepared and, you know, they, they at that time they was, you know, they were having blips and stuff like that, but, it's still Man United, you know. There was Fred, there was uh, Matic, Fred, that's Martial, crazy. that's crazy. Harry Maguire, De Gea, and everyone. And it it was it was it it was good. It was better. I'd probably say the Tottenham game was better, uh, but still, it it was another great experience for me. Yeah. So that, that's crazy that you've actually been on the mm. pitch with those those players. So, uh, you know, in being from Sheffield, I'm guessing that game you played against Harry Maguire. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like, obviously, to play against someone from Sheffield as well? And, you know, is it like, wow, I want to be in that position? Or was it more like, mm, you know, it's only, it's only him? How did you prepare for it in your mind? Um, a bit of both, to be fair. Um, you know, because he's from Sheffield, it's, it's uh, you know, you say small world, really, isn't it? But, you know, it's somewhere you, where you want to be, especially he was centre-half for Man United. It's everyone's dream to play for obviously a big club and Man United's up there with the best. Yeah. Wow, bro. That sounds great. What we're going to do is take a five minute break, guys, and we'll be back shortly. Yes, guys, we're back again. Obviously, I'm enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying it at home as well. And if you're listening to us on Spotify, I hope you are enjoying it too. Harvey, how are you feeling, bro? Yeah, good. Enjoying good. it. Good. Enjoying it. Good, man. Good, man. So we're going to talk about Stockport now. The next club. What was that like? Um, well, it was quite, it was, it was inconsistent for me really, but, um, overall I did enjoy my time there, even though I didn't play as much. Um, I think I played like two or three games, but the lads were, the lads were fantastic there. Yeah. You know, I got on with them so well. Um, and I, I knew a couple of lads, you know, obviously have been at Tranmere with me then. Um, and yeah, it was, it was again, just moving to another club and enjoying my time. Yeah. So obviously we were talk about, obviously you, you got injured at the start. Yeah. What was that like? You know, talk us through it. You know how you, how it happened first of all. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll take you back before it then, really, because we was in pre-season and um, they didn't know much about me because um, I'm, I, you know, because I didn't play at the end of Tranmere. Um, so now I was just getting back into football. I was doing all right in the pre-season, and then in training, I remember there was I was obviously running back to my goal, and they'd cross a ball behind me, and as I've gone to turn. My, my right MCLs obviously just popped out and I've just ripped, ripped, I think it ripped at about 70%. Wow. Um, you know, but then it just, it becomes so stiff and I knew straight away that, you know, it could be another, you know, 13, 14 weeks I'm back on that pitch. What was the reaction like from the club when that happened? Oh, fantastic. <clears throat> they were fantastic. Um, especially the um, physio, Luke. It was great with me. It was great with all the players. He was like a, it was like a player to us. Uh, someone we could, you know, always come to for our problems, and it helped, helped me out a lot. Um, he stuck with me for, I think it was thirteen weeks. I was out for, wow. um, you know, just getting that rehabilitation and get the movement in it again. 
Yeah. So, you know, obviously I hear a lot of um, footballers talk about their relationship with the physio. How important is the relationship with, with the physios? Uh, I and, think every, every club I've been to, it's been massive. Um, you know, getting on, getting along with them and they the really help you, especially especially when you are injured and, you know, you are down mentally. It's someone who's always next to you, you know, making you laugh and keeping you, keeping you, you know, your uh, high hopes on you. But, Especially Luke, he was he was a big influence on me. Yeah, and going through obviously the injury and stuff like that. Did your like did anything your opinion on football change after that, or was it still just the same? It was still just the same. Uh, I think it was then maybe coming to the end of it where I was I was struggling to get back fit. Um, you know, my knee my knee weren't recovering right, and I just thought there was some point of me just thinking like maybe do I just pack it in? Um, wow. Yeah. It was it was tough for me to. And how how old were you at this this point? Um, twenty one I was. Or yeah, wow. twenty one. Wow. So you were gonna quit football at the age of twenty one. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Wow. So you know your mindset. So I'm guessing, obviously, that injury obviously kind of obviously you were out of football for a couple of months for what? Well, yeah, quite a yeah. while. So when you got back into it and you got fit again, what was that like? Um, it wasn't too bad to be fair. It was just, it was then, you know, taking the next step. I got back fit and now I want to get back in the team. But the lads were flying at that point. You know, I think we were second for most of that year. Um, and, you know, you can't really complain when, when the team's playing well and, you know, you won in a game. But, you know, the lads in front of you are putting on excellent performances week in, week out. So it was hard, but I was, in, I was just, I was just enjoying myself being there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Being around the players. Yeah. So obviously after Stockport, what happened next? Um, after Stockport, um, I think you know one of the coaches called Dave. Uh, Dave had contact with Halifax. Uh, you know there was interest in getting me because then at the end of, at the end of Stockport, I didn't think I was going to get another club. I thought I had to go, you know, another league lower. Um, but luckily, um, Dave got in contact with Halifax and they said, "Oh, we want to do a meeting with you." So met with the gaffer, the assistant, and then. Um, Sarge, who I know, he's called Joe Sargent. He was um, one of my coaches at Sheffield under-14s and he's there now, still there now. Oh, wow. So obviously, you know, he put a good in, good word in for me um, and I met with him and, you know, we took it from there, really. Yeah. And what, what are the fans like at Halifax? How was it obviously settling into the building and the whole place? Yeah, it was good. You know, soon, you know, on my first day, we got a car school. You know, a car school, it, it's massive, you know, especially you got to get on with all of them. Um, yeah, yeah. And I got on with uh, I got in with Martin Woods on first day, big Scotsman. You know, <laughs> I'd done it, done his done his years in football. And yeah, yeah, it was great for me uh, throughout the year. Yeah, you know, helped me out. Um, and I, I can't I can't thank him enough. Yeah. So you know, um, was that the that was the first season? So was that your first season at Halifax? Yeah. And then you obviously was that the season you were fighting for promotion? Yeah, yeah. So what was that like? Quite. Uh, yeah, it was. Cause I've, I've been in I've been in that situation before, obviously with Tramia, but I'd never I've never really been like a big part of it. You know, I'm coming in and out of the team at yeah, yeah. Tramia, but then here, you know, I was starting quite a lot, so you know there were there were big pressure on us all year. But I thought we dealt with it very well. Yeah, um, you know, I think we were in the I think we were in the top six for all, all all the season. And wow, it was just it was going into games knowing we were more confident and confident. And you know, we had a little slip up. Um, I think it was about April. Start of April, but you know it was just it was just great to be there. How do you keep yourself in the mindset of like go again, go again, go again? Um, I think it I think it helps with you know the people around you, you know your family and the players around you, especially. I think we had a very tight knit group, and you know coming in every day was just it, it was just, it was just a like big laugh around. It really yeah. were yeah. Um, it was easy really. You know training just training become so natural to us, so then we could just perform on a Saturday. Wow. So, you know, obviously that that happened. You obviously got to the to the playoffs and stuff. What was it like like for the for the whole dressing room when the team was it like a, a bit of like a brotherhood in there or was it what was that like? Yeah, I, w- I would say it's like a big brotherhood. Um because we were so close together, it felt like, you know, everyone's fighting for the same goal. No one's, you know, even the lads who weren't in the squad on that day, you know, they were they were with us all the way. Um yeah. You know, just a shame we come short. And what was the manager like? Was it um he's from he came from Oldham? Was it yeah, yeah. Pete Wild. Pete Wild. And how was he 
like with you, you know, when he came in from obviously Oldham? Yeah, he was great with me. Um, and the assistant was as well, who's our gaffer now, uh, wow. Chris Millington. Uh, that was great with us, you know. Didn't take it too seriously, but, you know, when it when when we needed, you know, kick off our arses, he gave us. Wow. So, Harvey, obviously, before we started, I told you to write three words that you used to best describe your career. Yeah. So, we're going to get the, the sheet now from the lovely assistant okay. behind the camera. <laughs> so, the first word you put is inconsistent. Mm. Why? Just because, you know, since I was 19, when I first went... It was playing a bit and then come to Stockport, didn't play. Then Halifax played more. And then the second year Halifax played a lot more. It's just it's just getting to that consistently of playing every week, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And how do you how do you how are you working to, to reach that? Just really just playing, you know, best as possible in every game, you know, making sure that you're the first first person on the team sheet. You know, it's no injuries. That's a that's a big thing, you know, keep your body right. Because I think if you keep your injuries out and you're all, you're always available to play, you know, that helps you massively. Yeah. The second word you put is enjoyable. Yeah, enjoyed it. Absolutely loved it. Um, you know, big moments when when we got promoted with Tranmere through the playoffs. You know, being at Wembley, it, it was massive. Um, you know, playing against Tottenham, playing against Man U. You know, I've, I've loved every minute of it, really. Yeah. And the final word you put is adapting. Yeah. Adapting to situations. Um, especially like moving away, for example, that was always a big thing for me because, you know, I was quite, I was quite a, like a home person. You know, I'd, everything was around me, but then obviously it took a big step to move out and, you know, move in with someone who I've only known for a couple of months, but, and then going to Stockport, not playing, you know, dealing with that. But, yeah. you know, I think it's coming good now. Harvey, what does family mean to you? Uh, everything really. Um I think they're the ones that have been there all the time and they always will be. Um, from my mom taking me to, you know, every session to my stepdad, to my dad. You know, I think the only the only big thing for me is them. That's that's all all I care about. Well, wow. Harvey, I just want to thank you for coming on. Thank you for and having me. This is a you know, it was wonderful to have you on speak to you. <clears throat> hear about your journey and I feel like this is a wonderful way for us to obviously wrap up the podcast and um, bro honestly I wish you all the best for the future we're going to keep in touch obviously of course. and uh, hopefully we get you back on soon appreciate it thank you thank you guys for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell down below to keep you updated for when we post our next video we'll see you in the next one peace peace